Hello, I'm Dr. Beth Godey. And I'm Dr. Martha Leatherman. I'm a geriatric specialist in psychiatry. And I'm a neuropsychologist, and I specialize in aging. We're experts in dementia care, and we're here to provide you some information and answer some questions that we hear very commonly about dementia and other issues in aging. Hi, we're glad to see you again. Um, we were talking about sleep, and sleep has been in the news a lot uh, over the last few years. Increasingly, we hear about the importance of sleep for weight control, memory function, health, all kinds of things. So we thought we would talk a little bit about sleep and sleep deprivation and how that can affect people's memories and functioning. You don't have to have a sleep disorder like sleep apnea or other kinds of disorders to have cognitive or memory problems in daily life from sleep difficulties. Even if you're just not getting enough sleep each night uh, or not getting the right kind of sleep at night, um, you can have difficulties uh, with your memory and with your attention concentration mm -hmm. and your ability to multitask. And uh, the old thought of catching up on sleep on the weekends, like, oh, well, I'm, I'm not sleeping well during the work week, but I'll catch up on Saturday and Sunday, that, that really doesn't work. You it may be better than nothing. Yeah, but, but it's, it's, you have to have some consistency in sleep. Right. We're learning more and more about how important sleep can be in daily functioning, and people usually will... Uh, uh, attribute their memory problems or cognitive function to, oh, I'm under a lot of stress or I have a lot to do. Well, that, that may be true, but if you're getting good sleep, you're better able to manage the stress and all the multitasking that you have to do. And usually when you are in, in a lot of, uh, under a lot of stress, you tend to get less sleep. You're not as, uh, you're not as able to go to sleep. You have more going on, more that you have to do. Uh, so the two things kind of go hand in hand. They do. They do. So if you're having trouble sleeping um, and you're having some memory problems, um, the first thing to do is, is to look at the source of your sleep problems. Is it stress? Is it too much to do? Do you need to get uh, other family members involved, care managers? Um, assistance with with the things that you have going on or do you need help from a professional or are you might you might even be doing simple things at which a professional can help you identify simple things such as taking some work to bed to do before you go to sleep uh, and then what happens is that you're thinking about work or you're thinking about the next day's schedule instead of relaxing and calming down right. before you sleep. There's actually a term for the things that we need to do around bedtime to help us sleep better. It's called sleep hygiene. And uh, you shouldn't watch TV in bed. That tends to keep people awake. Having the TV on with the, the flickering lights uh, can interrupt the, the hormones that your brain produces while you're sleeping and helps you sleep properly. Um, being uh, uh, active in bed with, with the work and that sort of thing. Yeah. Or using your uh, bed as as, an, as something else than, than sleeping and bedroom activities, you have uh, think craft projects that you have to clean off the bed before Income you go to tax. sleep. Yeah, the tax documents, <laughs> oh good heavens. And all kinds of, of things that you may have on your bed. Your kids may use your bed to sleep, to uh, play on, and may have toys all over the place. And so your bedroom, really and your the area where you sleep needs to be the area where that you sleep. sleep right the other thing about sleep is that um you need to sleep in a cooler room people sleep more deeply when uh the, the temperature is a little bit cooler but there's been an interesting historical study i, I shouldn't say study but observation uh that that i recently read about about uh split sleep and some people think that they have to fall asleep and then stay asleep for eight hours or else it's not good sleep. 
the sleep that you get during the time that you're asleep is more important than the number of hours. But uh, years ago, before we had electricity, people used to sleep from dark time until maybe midnight or one o'clock and then get up and do other activities. They would have parties sometimes from like one to three in the morning and then go, and that was called the first sleep and then the, the middle time and then the last sleep and they would sleep then until sunup. Um, so our clocks may actually be more um, geared towards some waking in the middle of the night. If you wake in the middle of the night, um, try to go back to sleep. If you can't, you might get up and make a cup of uh, non-caffeinated tea, read for a little bit, and then go back. And, and likely, you'll sleep deeply and well. Yeah, that's a good point. Instead of waking up in the middle of the night and then thinking, oh, I'm never going to go back to sleep. This is disrupt. Uh, I've mm -hmm. disrupted my eight hours. Now I'm going to feel like I'm going to feel terrible tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to just calm down. And uh, you may fall back to sleep after a few minutes if you give yourself a chance. Or you may need to get up and, and relax and, and uh, calm down again, either through reading or, or a cup of hot liquid. Um, the other thing that people need to be careful of is um, sleeping medications. Many sleeping medications, especially the ones over the counter, can cause lots of memory impairment. So it may not be so much that you're not sleeping well, but that you're taking over-the-counter sleeping medications that uh, are interfering with your memory. Um, the prescribed sleeping medications really have an indication for a short-term period of time. They're not supposed to be taken for years or even months. Um, and over time, they can lose their effectiveness. And, and the other thing is that most of them really don't produce the same kind of sleep structure, mm -hmm. the right um, levels of sleep that natural sleep produces. So you may pass out, but your brain might not be getting the right kind of sleep. So you need to be careful of that sort of thing. And sometimes under conditions of really severe stress or difficult time in your life, you may need a little medication mm -hmm. just to get you through that time and help you sleep. Uh, but the dependency on right. sleep medications alone is something that we all need to try to avoid. So, um, you know, just like we've talked about with diet and exercise, things in moderation. The way to take care of your brain is to do the things your mom told you to do. Eat sensibly, eat well, uh, don't drink too much, get good exercise and get good sleep. Uh, and that will go a long way towards helping your brain stay healthy. For more answers to questions like these, our book, The Insider's Guide to Dementia Care, is available at Amazon.com.